I'm Amy Chamberlain, chef owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant and Tavern. Welcome to my show, Life of the Party. As you notice behind me, I have a plethora of guests tonight. We're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff and meeting some very interesting people. So let's get this interview underway. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Pat. We are here today because of an astronaut scholarship fund. And everyone here is involved in that. Pat Music, who is an amazing artist, married to Jerry Carr, who is an astronaut. You were in, in uh, space for how many days at once? 84. 84 yeah. days at once. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have Mary and Jerry Matulka who are here because they bid on the Astronaut Scholarship Fund silent auction prize, which is spending time with Jerry and Pat, being on my show, and coming to the dinner tomorrow night at The Perfect Wife, which we're having an Italian feast. If you haven't signed up, you should do that. So um, we'll talk a little bit about the Astronaut Scholarship Fund first. Um, as an astronaut, obviously, you're very interested in that, and you donate a prize every year, correct? Yes. Um, the, the original seven astronauts uh, set up this uh, scholarship f foundation uh, many, many years ago, and uh, they gave a huge sum of $1,000 to about, to about 10 students. Well, uh, as time went on, it kept building and building and building, and we've added uh, all of the other astronauts who have re uh, retired and some of the active astronauts as well are participating in this program, and we now uh, offer 38 $10,000 scholarships to wow. students who are studying science, technology, engineering, and math. That's STEM, right? STEM, talk right. About that. Now, does every student who receives this scholarship expect to become an astronaut or is just part of the of what's involved in say what happens around an astronaut well it, uh, it they, they they just want to be uh, make their careers in you know science and education and that sort of thing but interestingly enough one of our scholars is an astronaut now wow yep. oh that's amazing yeah and Jerry and Mary, you support this fund every year, right? Or We've been long-time supporters of the, the fund. I myself am an engineer, and so I understand the need for more engineers <coughs> and more technology and uh, science and math. And uh, I'm an engineer because of Jerry and the other astronauts, actually, because I watched the moon program, and I, I watched Jerry doing his spacewalks from Skylab. And, and so I became an engineer because I always wanted to be an astronaut. I didn't become one, but I'm an engineer, and, and it's been a very rewarding career. And so whatever we can do to help promote that, we try and get behind. That's great. And, and so you have come to Vermont a few times, right? That's this is our third time here, yes. And do you bid on Jerry and Pat's prize because you love Vermont? Are you drawn to the state? Oh, we love Vermont. We love Jerry and Pat. Uh, they're probably getting tired of seeing us. I wish there'd be some new blood, but uh, no, no, we've no. actually gone to Italy twice with them, and so uh, it, for us, it's been a win-win situation, you yeah, know. It's more of a friendship than anything else. Yeah. Definitely. That's yes. too. That's yes. wonderful. And you live in Texas, right? Correct. That's neat. And you work for Texas Instruments? No, I, I work for Cisco Systems. Oh, okay. Cisco Systems, and that's based in Dallas? Well, they've got places all over the world. It's actually headquartered in California, but um, my particular function is in Texas. Do you ever use engineering in the kitchen? Like oh, sure. Wise? Yeah. Yeah, you I mean, find I'm, I'm more of a technician. I mean, I, I like to follow things to a T where Mary's like, ah, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know? so. You'd be the baker and she could make the soup. Yeah. Well, my grandmother taught me, you'd pour the salt in your hand. That, yeah, that's a teaspoon. Yeah. 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 So Jerry, he gets upset. you got to measure that. <laughs> <laughs> and if I do in the spoon, it's always perfect, so I don't know why. Right, you put it from your hand into the spoon. Yeah. See, I told you. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, so we... Um, Pat has written a book. She, Pat is a very accomplished artist. She has installations in how many places? In the 50. 50 places across the country. Some at the Southern Vermont Art Center, which is mm -hmm. right here that you can all see. Um, tell us a little bit, Pat, about um, these large installations that you do and, and how long some of them have been there and what drove you to, 
to bring them to these places? Well, I trained uh, educationally as a painter, and I painted for 20 years. And then one day I saw the paintings begin to move off the wall, and I made them a little more dimensional, and then they moved a little farther off the wall. And um, by then I had met Jerry, and uh, I s had the idea of taking them off the wall onto the floor, and I poked him and said, I have an idea, and he said, how much does it weigh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were strong enough to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what medium is a lot of your sculpture in? Well, we work in, he actually gets his name on the work now. We work in stone and steel, um, primarily wood, uh, sometimes glass. Wow, that's amazing. And so the glass is that blown glass or stained glass? No, or? it'll be cut glass. Cut glass. And yeah. The longest piece that we have done is 65 feet, and that's uh, in Bentonville, Arkansas, at the Crystal Bridges Museum of Art in their sculpture garden, and it's a, a series of large stone uh, pillars or, or plinths, and they are moving in a, in a sort of procession through the woods down the bank, across the stream, and up the other side of the bank. And they represent uh, the Cherokee Nation as it made its trip ca trips called the Trail of Tears back in the 1840s. Wow, that's amazing. I've seen your work on your website, and hopefully someday I'll be able to travel around and see them in person. Um, but what, what is your website? It's Kim Camus. C A M U S art. Uh, no, can, can, Camu yeah, camuart.com. Dot com. Dot yeah. Com, yeah. And the pictures are beautiful. You can see all the sculptures and where they're installed, and it's really amazing stuff. So, not only are you a painter and a sculptor and a general artist, but you're an author. And you've written a book that um, brings the whole thing together <laughs> the astronaut, the artist. The guest from Texas <laughs> will be cooking Italian food from this book that Pat wrote. And tell us about this book and, and why it's so special. Well, it's, um, it represents 45 years of my life, uh, the trips that I made, the time I spent in uh, Italy, primarily Tuscany, Italy. Um, it, so it, in one sense, is a memoir. Uh, it's also an art history book. Um, there is a fictional story in it about my love affair with Piero della Francesca, the uh, pre-Renaissance artist. Um, he actually said it was okay. Yeah, he's 600 <laughs> years old, so I'm not threatened. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cookbook. Uh, there are 16 recipes in it, uh, several of them from um, the Coltibono uh, a state uh, in central Tuscany, which you'll hear a bit about tonight. Um, it's um, a, a book about Italian history and also some World War II history uh, and, and the importance of the relationship between the Italian people and the Americans. Incidentally, this book's on sale at the North Shore Bookstore, too. <laughs> oh, nice going. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Very nice. So um, we will be cooking some recipes from that tonight and tomorrow at the Italian Feast. Um, we are sharing all the responsibilities of getting this turkey in voltini, which is what we're making tonight, into the oven and prepared for your luscious din din. Um, and so I think probably we could get going on that right now. Are you guys ready to do some cooking? Mm, yes. I think so. Do it. Okay, yeah, let's go. great. <laughs> well, we're back in the kitchen. Well, we're not back in the kitchen. We're back and in the kitchen. And we have Mary and Jerry Matulka here who are going to help start the involtini. Involtini, as Jerry told me earlier, is the Italian word for roulade. So what we're making is a pounded turkey breast that's stuffed with a radicchio onion and sage filling and baked in fresh tomato sauce, which is what you'll be having for dinner. So um, the first thing we need to do is 
cook the filling so it has time to cool a little bit before we roll it inside the turkey. So um, Jerry is going to cut the onion in the radicchio and Mary is going to chop up the sage. And Mary, hold up that mezzaluna. That is directly from Italy, right, Jerry? Yes. And that means half moon in Italian, and it is used for chopping herbs. Do they chop, use other things? Nuts, chop it? all sorts of nuts, things. Nuts, herbs, so anything. anything. Chopping. Yeah, so nuts, herbs, hard-boiled eggs, mushrooms, probably all that kind of good stuff. So, um, Mary, you, this is your first time using yes, one? Yes, this will be my first time. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and it was my first time today, and you'll find that it's, it's like uh, driving a bumper car at first. Uh, <laughs> it's lots of fun, but confusing all at the same time. So, um, you guys just start cooking away, and we'll try to have a little conversation here. Um, I know that you have a lot of grandchildren that have lived with you on and off and so you've you've both been very responsible for um, making dinner for a lot of people right right um, Jerry tell me about um, the steak that you like to make oh one of the things I've grown fond of cooking uh, this summer it's been really hot in Texas so rather than go outside and fire up the grill I've been doing in uh, cast iron seared steak where you uh, heat the cast iron pan in the oven to uh, 500 degrees and then you uh, sear it on top of the stove for about 30 seconds on the side and then put it back in the oven for uh, another two minutes on each side and then let it rest for five minutes and uh, it turns out to be a perfect uh, medium rare steak so uh, it's really easy it's really fast and it's one of my favorite ways of cooking steak right now and uh, a lot of us here in Vermont don't have central air, so it's hard to imagine opting to turn your <laughs> oven up to 500 and cooking inside on a hot summer day. <laughs> but uh, the but the you recipe, have cold winters. Yes, exactly. That that's definitely a, a January February recipe for us. I look forward to that's trying that. For you. Yeah, that'll work for sure. Just throw a little oil in here, a little oil in the pan, and we put this chopped onion right in the hot pan. Turn that up a little. And um, Mary, you you have made a lot of things. Um, you've, you've both been to Italy several times, right? With the with um, Jerry and Pat, and um, have grown grown fond of Italian food. What are some big batch items you make for your families? Well, we're getting to risotto, actually. Uh, but you know, everyone says it's really hard to make. But I think the key to that is always have your uh, your liquids hot and, yeah. and add them slowly but if you don't have your liquids hot it's not going to cook right and so we've been really successful at that our daughter actually went to Sicily to study this summer and uh, we we got into whatever was going on in Sicily is what we were cooking at home because we missed her. <laughs> so. so would she send you like food porn from the restaurant she was eating yeah. at and yeah. say oh I have to make that and did she, um, did she give you any pointers? Did you call her and say, hey, you know, we're trying to make this. What do you think we should do? I think that went the other way around, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. she was, you know, she was working. <laughs> and, and, you know, she was, she was actually digging and, and going to school and having to learn how to speak Italian. And they went on Saturday morning and bought all their groceries for a week because they didn't have time to go any other time during the day. Uh, when she first week. got there, she called me up, like, within the first day, and she goes, I gotta talk to you. Oh, and I'm thinking, my goodness, what's going on? How do you use an Italian coffee maker? I oh. need to make some coffee. I know you've got one. How do you use it? So I explained to her how to use it, and then life was good again. That's the double decker thing, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. We had one growing up, right, Dad? You made your espresso with Jean Latuga? <laughs> I'm not making it up, am I, Mom? <laughs> you don't know. I remember everything. <laughs> yes, Lauren, that's right. <laughs> so when you make your risottos, do you, do you put different things in them, like sometimes mushrooms? Sometimes well, we've, we've gotten really fond of a mushroom risotto recipe, and we've actually been practicing it because when we go to Italy the next time, we're going to cook it over there. And so we're trying to get the game plan down so it's like falling off a log. So <laughs> you put in about five different, well, basically any kind of mushroom you can find. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it turns out really nice and 
Mary's lactose intolerant. This recipe doesn't call for butter, so uh, it's something she can eat as well. So, or no uh, cream at the end, so it's, yeah, and usually it's got spinach great, with cheese, right? Great right. Flavors. Yeah, we'll this that. has a little Parmesan in it, but that doesn't bother her, so. Oh, that's good. It, uh, it turns out really nice that way. Oh, very nice. You know, around here it's pumpkin season and butternut squash season, yeah. so we've been doing a lot of butternut squash and pumpkin risottos with sage and, um, also, someone called me to sell me Sepp's um, porcini mushrooms today, and I was a little weary because I wasn't really sure, you know, how to identify them myself. So I opted to, to wait and do some research before I buy some mushrooms from a gentleman that just calls. It's, I got a lot of people I got to worry about. <laughs> um, all right, so how's that sage? Good? Is that good enough for you? Does it need yeah. counter? Maybe just a tiny little bit more. Okay. So we're cooking the onions with the radicchio in the oil. We're using olive oil. Um, as Mary said, she's lactose intolerant. So um, sometimes you can cook it in butter. When Jerry and I made your dinner today, we did some in butter and some in olive oil. Um, I love butter and um, opted to do my batch in butter um, but this this is really it's not going to make that big of a difference and olive oil is also delicious especially when you're cooking Italian food in fact they probably don't use much butter in Italy I don't know when you they ask don't them, even know what it is almost really it kind of insults them because we go and please don't use any butter and they go what is this butter <laughs> they not were not France. very happy <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Well, then shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this cooks quite quickly. I think we can throw that sage in there now. Did you have fun with the mezzaluna, Mary? I like this. I need, I need heavy metal music to like rock it out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Little Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So we just add that. And that's wilting very nicely. I've got it on a pretty high temp. If, if you cook it at a high temp like this, you don't want to walk away and keep stirring it. And we're getting there and we're going to add some red wine. Don't use it all or there won't be any left to drink. We're going to put in a bay leaf. Simmer that in there, and some pepper. Pepper is delicious. A little bit of kosher salt. And we just want to cook that until it's dry so we get the, the moisture out of there. And once that's done, we cool it off, and then we're going to roll it in the turkey. So we're gonna just let this go, give it a couple minutes. We'll get Jerry up here to show us how to use his bata carne, how he pounds his turkey with, and we'll roll this up and get it in the oven. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Jerry, you have a lot to teach me here today. All right. Um, we're gonna pound that turkey and stuff it with the radicchio that I made with the matulkas. Mm -hmm. So tell us about how you pound your turkey. Well, this is called a, a bata carne which means beat the chicken or beat the meat. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's really neat because um, when, you, when you pound the meat, you can kind of control with this thing uh, how the meat's gonna spread out. And that's different from the, you know, the hammers that we use over here with all of the teeth in it or yeah. the square thing. So you can just... Uh, Jeez. So now we have, I guess what the Italians call a scallopini. Mm-hmm. And we'll spread some of this uh, radicchio mix in it. But first of all, I need to prepare this bowl for it by putting some tomato sauce in there. And I'm going to start cutting these tomatoes to all show right. you how Jerry and Pat make their tomato sauce. 
You're not going to believe it. These tomatoes I picked up at Dutton. And uh, they're their number twos, a dollar a pound. Can't go wrong. All the tomatoes I grew were perfect, so. <laughs> All two of them. Yeah, ours are perfect, too. <laughs> but Jerry, you and Pat had a record uh, tomato crop this summer, we didn't really you? We really did. We had a good one. Jerry and Pat made about two gallons, two and a half gallons of sauce for this, this evening and freezing it as they go. So you are the lucky ingesters of that tonight. That's a beautiful piece. Hey, you see how it just kind of spreads out because I could control how it spreads. Yeah. Where with a hammer, you just beat it. Yeah, you can feel probably thickness of each one yeah. too. Very nice. So I'm cutting up these tomatoes and then we're going to put them in the oven with some tomatoes and, I mean, with tomatoes, with some olive oil and salt and pepper. And then you roast them in the oven for about 45 minutes, you said, mm -hmm. right? And pull them out and then put it in the Cuisinart with fresh basil and you're done. That's it. So you know, when you, simple. When you've done that for 45 minutes, they're pretty wrinkled. You know, they're look, looking pretty wrinkled, but they're flooded with olive oil. Well, See, why don't you show me? Piece. All right. Now, the Italian chefs, they say, now, you use just a little bit of olive oil. And then they proceed to take the olive oil and throw in about a half a quart or half a liter. <laughs> just a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to... Uh, Let's see, what do we need here now? We need a little salt. A little, little tiny bit of salt, but not much. Pat and I don't cook with salt at all, really. And we uh, kind of let the, the person who's going to eat the, f the food add their salt. Okay. And, and there's uh, a pepper mill right down there if uh, you grab yeah. that. Okay. And... Sometimes you cook it with the basil in it, and sometimes yeah. you don't, right? Uh, we found that basil tastes a whole lot better when it's fresh, fresh and raw. Yeah. And when you cook it, it takes a different sort of a taste, and, and we like it both ways, really. Hmm. So um, what temperature do you cook this at? 350. 350 for and about 45, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And do you, is this okay? I know I used our sheet pan for the radicchio. Is this yeah. a little bit crowded for you? Do you like it to be more spread out or this Not is really. good? No, that, that's pretty that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to um, put this in a 350 degree oven. <laughs> <laughs> ovens under here. <laughs> yeah, we've got ovens all over the place. <laughs> um, and then we'll, um, when that's ready, put it in the Cuisinart and throw the fresh basil in there at the same time. And you've got your sauce. And so it's, it's really a very, very simple sauce. And it's uh, so easy to do. Tell us about the, um, the sauce in Italy that you learned. What was it called? The fast sauce? The quick sauce? Yeah, they, they call it, a, it's a quick sauce. And um, you, uh, you start off with a sofrito. Uh, sofrito in Italian is sort of a, uh, the beginnings. Uh, and, and you do carrots and uh, onions and uh, celery and what else? Or olive oil, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, just a little bit. And then, yeah, just a little bit. And then you uh, saute that until everything's nice and tender. Then you add your tomatoes and you simmer for maybe 10 minutes. And the tomatoes they like to use in Tuscany are the cherry tomatoes. Huh. And uh, uh, just cook it for 10 minutes or so and it's done. Wow, that sounds good to me. Good sauce. Most of our uh, training that we got in, in Italy was uh, at the uh, Badia a Coltibono. And these are the people that are providing uh, the, the taste of wine that we're going to have tonight. But most of our uh, the training that we got came from those people. And, and in, uh, in Pat's book, there are several recipes from Coltibono, and, and some of them will be highlighted in tomorrow's dinner as well. Yeah. And the, uh, the owner of Coltibono 
who is Roberto Stucchi Pernetti, is uh, his family, uh, is uh, descendants of the de Medici's, and his, uh, his mother is Lorenzo de Medici, uh, the famous Italian chef. And uh, uh, they have provided us with uh, some wines over here so that everybody can have a taste of their wonderful wines. And it's a 2009 uh, Chianti, Chianti Classico Reserva. So don't so. shoot it. Yeah. Smell it, swirl it, <laughs> taste it. And then make reservations to go to Italy and go to the cooking classic yeah. Conte Buono. Um, so I'm going to, um, after this one, we'll get that in the oven. And time will magically whip by. And uh, I'll, I'll pull out the cooked casserole. And we'll be able to see what it looks like when it's all done. Ain't television wonderful? It is. It's <laughs> wonderful. Not as wonderful as space travel, though. Right. No, that's hard to compete with. So after we put all the turkey in, we cover the turkey with sauce. And then we sprinkle on chopped Kalamata olives, chopped oregano. I picked that today in the rain, so it's fresh and clean. Uh, a little more pepper. We sprinkle a little more wine. And um, I take the bay leaf that we used in the um, radicchio and bury that in the sauce. So um, let's just, for time's sake, cover that up and do the garnish work. Okay. All right. And um, here. Here you Thank are. You, and I'm going to go grab. It's going to be really magical because that one is still sitting there and the cooked one is going to be here. It's like time <laughs> travel, actually. Be right back. This is Kalamata olives that have been chopped. And then on top of that, I'm going to put this chopped oregano. So we have sage in the radicchio and oregano on it, garnishing it, and basil in the sauce. And uh, I don't know if you can get any more Italian than that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and okay. then, then that gets covered in sauce, covered with, I covered it with foil and a little bit of parchment. We baked it for 45 minutes at 350. And voila, it is saucy and delicious. And it holds together, as you can see with the radicchio inside it. I brought some cheese. I, um, poor planning on my part, we are out of um, Italian cheese at the restaurant tonight. I put in a quick order. But I brought some Hildine Farm Havarti, which is a very nice sharp cheese that you can sprinkle on this if you'd like. Um, I think it'll go very well. It's a cow's milk cheese. So how do you think we did there? Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I'm fit, very excited. Probably fit to eat. Fit to eat. All right. Yeah. Well, I really don't want to prolong this taste of the wine much longer. <laughs> so I think we can stop what we're doing here, start thinking about dinner, and have a sip of wine. That sounds like a good idea. Right. Thank you so much, Jerry. Oh, you're that welcome. tons of fun. Well, that was a fun evening of cooking. <laughs> now we get a little fun evening of drinking. And uh, before we have a toast, I just have a couple of questions. OK. That mezzaluna and that bata carne are interesting tools that a lot of us have never seen before. And you got yours directly in Italy, right? Yes, uh huh. In so, just about any hardware store, you can find them. In Italy? Yeah. Wow. Well, we'll have to talk to Joe Miles about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, what do you think if someone tried to find that in the United States or well, immediate uh, area? Well, Jerry said he saw the Mezzaluna on uh, Amazon. Some and I bet if you go to Google, you might be able to find a bata carne. It's B-A-T-T-A-C-A-R-N-E. All right, and, and maybe the first thing you do is try Vermont Kitchen Supply or J.K. Adams right yeah. here in town. Um, and they uh, order it for and you. And they would probably be able to order it for sure. you. Yeah, support local, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, um, and Jerry, um, I just have another question. I'm curious. I know this food is going to be amazing, but how does it compare to, to astronaut food? It's a lot better. <laughs> yeah. This is? Yeah, uh, Skylab food uh, 
doesn't cut it. Do they have uh, Do they have dehydrated turkey and voltini there for you? No, they didn't. They, <laughs> they had a lot of other dehydrated stuff. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to eating it. Yeah. So. Um, well, this this wine is uh, from uh, an abbey in uh, Chianti. It's called Coltibuono. It's uh, the oldest uh, Chianti growing uh, location uh, in Italy, and uh, it uh, was it started out with a bunch of monks in the the ninth century. Uh, then Cosimo de' Medici uh, adopted this. Uh, 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 a little obby, and he, he began to support these people. And in the 11th century, they built a, a wonderful uh, a church there. And this has been their wine for many, many years. And uh, a lot of years. Uh, Amy, to you, our wonderful, lovely host. Uh, Thank you. Chin Chin. <laughs> chin Chin. Chin Chin. <laughs> <laughs> you got to toast everyone. That's right. right. It was bad it's bad luck. luck. That's right. Salute. 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 Hmm. Wow, you're in for a treat. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh my goodness. Save some for dinner, right? You're next. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to all four of you. What a great fun show we've had. Thank you, everyone in the studio audience. Thank you out there in TV land. And we'll see all of you next time on Life of the Party. You spilled your glass, you never take the blame. It all ran down your shirt. Who the hell do you think I am? Take